Hey everyone, welcome back to Great Northwest Weaponry. This is Thomas, and as the video's title states, I had not too long ago broke my Luger, and it has been stressing me the heck out for some time. And uh, if you've been watching my shorts, uh, I, I recently started doing the first person shooting shorts, or FPS shorts, and the first one I did was the Luger, and this was post fixing it. So, it is functional now. Everything seems fine. I'll actually show a little clip from that right here. Oh yeah. So as you can see, it cycles. The gun is not falling apart. That was the major concern. You can actually, um, this is a pretty easy thing to describe. So if you lock the gun open, it locks on an empty mag. See your locking pin here rotates and it should be firm. You shouldn't be able to just, just tap it and have it fall. What was happening was after the first shot, this would fall into this position. After the second shot, it would fall out and then the gun would start falling apart. If I got a third shot off of which the first time that this incident happened, I was uh, with a friend who really wanted to shoot a Luger, never shot one, said, sure, you can shoot mine. And on the third shot that he fired, half of the gun went flying down range because the locking pin had fallen out of place. Not his fault. I should have been watching a little more closely to make sure that everything was okay, but I had never had this happen up to that point. Uh, quick side note, yes, I am repping Metallica. No, this is not because of Stranger Things. I've been into Metallica for a long time. This is, in fact, Metallica uh, Fifth Member Club of 2015. So I've been a member of the Metallica Fifth Member Club for a while. They're one of my favorite bands. I've seen them in concert a few times. I would love to see them again. But anyway, that notwithstanding, I do love Stranger Things, and that scene, if you're aware of it, was awesome. If you're not aware of it and you watch the show, you, you know, Catch up. But anyway, back to the Luger. This is this is neither the Stranger Things show nor the uh, the Metallica show. But this, you know, obviously was a significant problem. You don't want half of your gun flying down range every third shot. So I started looking into the problem. I had a couple of ideas of what it could have been. What it wound up being was something that I wasn't even aware really could be a problem. And it really was an easy fix. So I'll be showing you guys how to do that. A lot of this video is going to be a takedown. Uh, I'm only going to partially take it down. We did a full disassembly in this video's demo. So I will be linking that video in the description for this one if you are interested in a full takedown of the Luger. But specifically what we are going to be looking at is basically the frame of the gun. So I'll just be stripping off the top half and then leaving it alone. I'm not going to fully take the top half apart. I just need to get it off of the gun and to the side. So a lot of this is going to be tabletop view. And uh, before we go to that, real quick, just a couple of announcements. Uh, shorts, again, we've mentioned this a couple of times, but the shorts have been doing you know way better than I thought they would. So... I've started doing the first person shooting shorts, as you saw with the Luger and a couple of others up to this point. Shot a couple more of those today, in fact. Also shot a couple more first shots shorts with my friend Dylan, so you'll be seeing him in a couple of those. In the not-too-distant future, we're hoping to have him in a full-length demo doing one of his guns. Uh, probably going to be the Sour and Sun 38H, as that was the first gun that he did a short for. But... Got a lot of good content coming you guys' way. I am still planning on posting a full-length video every 10 days to maximum of two weeks. Uh, this one, we're coming you know, close to 11 days. Might even be 11 days by the time I get it all edited together and posted. But we're not going to be you know, really taking our time with this. I, um, I don't want the shorts to replace full-length videos. We're not going to be taking time with it. That doesn't even make sense. Whatever. Anyway, shorts are not going to be replacing full-length videos. They're going to be fill in in between so you guys have just a little bit more content rolling your way i've got some more ideas i've thought about doing some slow-mo shorts of which i would do exclusively some automatic weapons for that i think at this time uh both modern and vintage and for those i could do rifles and pistols right now for the the fps shorts i don't really have a good way to do that with rifles yet 
but uh, the, the ones for the pistols have been, you know, doing decent in views. The first shot shorts have been doing ridiculous in views, again, by, by the standards of what I've come to expect is, you know, over time, get two or three hundred views. Some videos get up to a thousand. We've got a couple that have got several thousand um, or even tens of thousands in a few cases, of which is still way beyond anything that I thought would ever happen with my uh, little meager attempt at having a gun channel on YouTube. But anyway... Fixing of the Luger. Here's how I did it. So a quick refresher on your initial stages of Luger takedown. You're going to start with the mag in the gun. You're going to pull back on the toggle and lock it open. Then you are going to extract your magazine. At this point, you can rotate the, uh, the offending piece, <laughs> your locking pin. Now you may close the gun extract your locking piece and as you do so it is going to lift out this side plate now your locking pin your locking pin rather comes out at this point you can grab and just slide the whole top of the gun off now we're down to pretty much the bare frame now again in my mind the offending piece of the gun was probably the locking pin Turns out it actually was not. So there's this little tiny piece in here. I've, so first off, the ideas that I had, like I said, I had a couple of thoughts of what it could be. First off, I was afraid that maybe some metal had worn off of the locking piece and that I was just simply gonna have to replace it. That wouldn't be a big deal. You can find these online for not terribly expensive, really. I mean, like 15 to $20, it seems. Other, and could have been much worse is if the actual channel that the locking pin goes in was worn out then the frame is you know broken for all intents and purposes but what it wound up being and i'm going to try and get this so you can see it there is this little pin inside here you can see the bottom of it in that spot right there by the tip of my finger that pin looking object is actually a sort of a spring so We've got a couple specialty tools to extract this. For one, needle nose pliers. And for two, something very thin. In this case, I have got uh, the uh, applicator for some Hoppies number nine lubricating oil. The reason we're using this is because we're going to go in through right there. We're going to simply push that out, that hole right there. And this is thin enough to fit in that hole. Now, we can that you can see that uh, it has basically fallen free. This thing is tiny, 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 tiny. And it should have a bow to the middle of it. And that acts on this little notch in the side of your locking pin. That is what creates the tension that makes it so the locking pin does not simply fall out of place. What had happened with my gun is this had been flattened. There was no bow in the middle of it. So how I fixed this was a couple pairs of pliers. Actually, I simply grabbed one end and then bent the other until uh, upon a couple of trial and error attempts at this, got it to where it would hold the pin firmly in place. So this is an easy fix. Uh, like I say, these, I guess these are a little more expensive than I, than I was initially thinking. This piece I've seen for like $15 or so. This piece, 25 to 35 Now, to put it back in, and this is actually the reason that we have our needle nose pliers, I'm going to grab it like so. And now you've got, again, this little tiny hole that that hooked end goes into. I'm going to attempt to place it back in and it is a bit of a pain you can also just try and kind of shimmy it in there i dropped it so I'll try that again i'm actually going to grab it kind of from the end here okay it's in And we've got it seated again. Okay, all good. Now, putting the slide back on with the Luger, it's interesting. You have to 
guide it onto the track on this side here. And you've got this hook that you gotta be mindful of. That hook needs to go underneath that ramp. Your hook goes under that. So it's weird and kind of easier said than done sometimes. So, yeah, what am I doing here? There we go. We're on the tracks and now you can see the hook has fallen into place already. So it's pretty easy for me that time. Get it locked back a little bit and then we can put our mag in while holding tension on it. You need it to be flush with the back when you put your mag in or it will sit forward funny. Now we can lock the gun open, take our side plate, and it's got that little lip there, goes underneath and in. We actually, uh, before we do that though, we need to start the locking pin. So locking pin in, side plate on, locking pin is being funny, there we go. And now it should rotate back into place. All good. And again, see, it is firm. I'm not just freewheeling here. That was the crux of my issue, was that this was freewheeling. So a very simple fix in this case. I'm very happy that it wasn't something far more extreme than that. And again, we now have a functional 1915 Imperial German marked DWM Luger. So you will be seeing this again. Again, we've been uh, really kind of trying to hammer on the shorts. We'll definitely be seeing this in a slow-mo short as the Luger uh, toggle action is very interesting to watch in motion. I uh, hope you guys enjoy that type of video. Hope you guys have been enjoying the shorts content up to this point. Again, we're really going to be working on trying to keep those coming in between regular full-length video posts. Meanwhile, hope you learned something here. Hope you all enjoyed the video. This has been Thomas of Great Northwest Weaponry, and I'll see you all next time.